Welcome. Today we are going to be taking apart a Samsung Chromebook. This particular model is the XE525 QBB. And it is a small convertible touchscreen laptop slash tablet. So we're going to need a, a small Phillips bit for this. It's going to be a 1.5 in this case and um, like maybe a small spudgy or some other tool to pick off the bottom feet. All right, so once you pop those little feet off, then we can remove the screws. All right, and then once we have those screws out, we can find the little seam here between the bottom case and the palm rest, and we're just gonna pop that off. All right, so the easiest way I found to do this is to just get a little tool in there uh, behind the hinge and just kind of pry up a little bit until that corner pops up. And then you can just use the little spudgy to kind of help you separate it as you go around. Once you've worked it all the way around, you can remove that little bottom cover and that'll give you access to the insides. All right, so as usual, we're gonna disconnect the battery first. Um, I see a few very small screws and then just a, looks like a pop-up type connector. Yeah, that's so the battery connector. You just get a fingernail under and just pop that straight up and then we'll remove the screws. It looks like there's one more on each end. So that's a total of six tiny screws to remove to get that battery out. All right, now we'll go ahead and remove the little card here. So we'll remove those Wi-Fi antennas and then just remove that screw. And then you can pull that Wi-Fi card out of the slot. Most Wi-Fi cards will just pop up once you remove that screw and then you can pull them out. This one, uh, you have to lift up a little bit on this side to get it over the fastener and then it just kind of pulls straight out of the motherboard there. All right, so it looks like the button and USB board is partially uh, covered by the hinge there. So, or not the hinge, but the little, uh, little lock. So we'll go ahead and remove that and also remove the ribbons and then we'll remove the uh, board here. And on this main uh, connector, it's just a flip up type. You're gonna get a fingernail underneath that little connector a retainer and then you're gonna have to lift up and pull out the ribbon at the same time. 
And then this one, you just grab the little tabs with your fingernails and then you can just work it straight out. And then this smaller connector here is kind of like the apple. You just want to pull back from, you want to pull from the cable side and just pull it straight up. And we'll pop it out of there. And it looks like we have one more little ribbon here. So we'll flip up on that little retainer. And then that'll allow us to pull that ribbon out. And we can go ahead and remove the screws. It's always a good idea to make sure you flip those uh, little bars back down after you remove the ribbon just to keep it from getting broken. That's how I remove the little USB board. All right, looks like we have another couple screws here. I believe that's a button board underneath there. So we'll go ahead and just remove those two screws. and remove the little uh, power button board. All right, so it looks like we're ready to remove that little motherboard. Um, it is held on by a little bit of a retainer bar here and I see numerous ribbons and at least one Wi-Fi antenna connected to it, so we're just gonna go, we'll start from the top left and remove the cables and ribbons that are connected to this motherboard. So as you can see on that one, it's just uh, it's a simple connector and those two little um, tabs there on, the both, on both sides uh, are there to grip it and push it out of the connector. And then this type, just flip up on it and it'll release the ribbon and just flip it back down. For the video cable, it's just a little black, uh, little handy black tab there. You just pull back and it'll just pull straight up off of that motherboard. All right, now we can start removing the screws. All right, so we have all the motherboard screws out. That includes the ones that are going through the heat sink. Um, so those are also holding the motherboard down. So you have to remove the little heat sink screws as well. And then there's just one more ribbon connector back here and you just pop up with your fingernail. And when you're removing a motherboard, it's always best to just kind of wiggle it first. And you need to pull from the inside part because it usually has ports sticking through the palm rest or bottom case, whatever the whatever model it is. Um, it'll have the ports actually pushing through the case, so you can't lift from this side. You have to lift from the inside and pull it back. And if you just kind of wiggle it gently, it'll give you an early warning in case you forgot a ribbon or there's something else kind of holding it in place. Um, that way you don't damage anything by accidentally leaving it connected. And that is the motherboard. We're gonna go ahead and leave the heat sink attached, but if you need to remove it, uh, it's just a few screws there on the back side. All 
right, so the next order of business is to, we're gonna separate the display assembly from the palm rest. So we're gonna wanna open it up all the way and check for the cables that come out of the display. We have the, uh, that might be the webcam cable and then the video cable and the Wi-Fi antennas are actually down in the, uh, the palm rest. So we have all the wires coming from the display loose. So all we need to do now is remove the hinge screws. All right, so with those screws removed, we'll just lift that display up and off and set it aside for now. All right, so what we're left with is the keyboard it does not look replaceable. Um, a lot of models are like that nowadays where it's just riveted in, so it's not gonna uh, be able to be replaced by itself. It'll have to be part of the palm rest assembly. And let's see. So your Wi-Fi antenna uh, looks like it's just a few tiny screws to remove that. And it's like something for the uh, stylus right there. So the speakers are just held on by grommets. Uh, the touchpad uh, looks like just a few screws and unstick the ribbon and you should be able to really release and replace that touchpad and then looks like the Bluetooth board here uh, is just stuck on with adhesive and of course you can see the antennas are just kind of stuck in there on the case so that is pretty much it for the palm rest everything else is gonna stay put on this one um, there is uh, a little camera right here if you need to replace that it's just one screw so that is pretty much it for the palm rest all right so we're left with just a uh, display assembly by itself um, this is a samsung chromebook so a complete display assembly if you've broken yours is probably the way to go um, they're really inexpensive and this particular model it's really a pain to take it apart without breaking it, especially the front bezel glass. It's just, um, you need a heat gun and a lot of patience uh, to take one of those apart. Um, so definitely, if you have a broken screen, it's worth considering just replacing it as a whole and um, just follow the steps in the video to remove it. It's actually not too bad. So that's how you disassemble a Samsung Chromebook XE525 QBB. If you liked the video or you found it informative, please like and subscribe. Thank you.